the craziest thing that I've heard on COVID-19 is that it is created by 5G. And so, and, and I was like, oh, that sounds crazy to me. And the, um, the person was like, no, 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 you got to watch this video. And they say it so compellingly, but I was like, ah, this doesn't sound right. It's not. I've, I've watched probably some of the same videos. Uh, it's complete crap, actually. Please don't believe it. I mean, first of all, we're getting much more radiation naturally than 5G is giving any cell. Um, plus, the, 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 that's not a good correlation. You know, you could say, oh, you know, the, the bats are breathing, so breathing causes this. You know, th- <laughs> there's a lot of correlations you can draw. So it's, it's not from a Wuhan lab either. Uh, it's not from a snake. It's almost certainly from a bat, maybe through a pangolin, the spiny anteater. Uh, but we can trace this. It, it's, it's simple science. We can read, you know, I'm a geneticist. I can read the DNA of the virus. And I can see that. So I, I want to no get into human- that. So one, I've heard you say that before. So I want to understand what is a virus and what would human fingerprints on a manufactured virus look like? So let's start with what a virus is. A virus is um, a sub life form. It doesn't have all the components to live, but it's got enough instructions that once it's inside a, another species cell, it can instruct that cell to make more copies of itself and break out. Um, and it's evolved over, you know, potentially 450 million years. These coronaviruses have been around for a very long time, infecting dinosaurs and infecting all the mammals on the planet. So these are ancient, formidable foes, but they actually have one weakness, which is their envelope. So I've, I've said that you shouldn't think of the virus like a cannonball because you... Most people draw it like this cannonball. It's actually more like a bubble that you can pop. And that's why washing your hands is so simple. Soap will kill this thing. Now what's on the outside is uh, little proteins that make it prickly. It's called a spike protein. And that spike is what engages with our throat and our lung cells. And once it engages, it tricks the cell into taking it inside the cell like a Trojan horse would. All right, so I wanna wanna go step by step. So I, I've often wondered, okay, if this thing gets on me, can it wiggle? Like, do they locomote? Or is it like, if it hits my cheek, is it going to crawl into my eye? Or is it only going to get there if I put my finger in my eye? Like, how does it work? Yeah, if it, if it gets into your, uh, on your face, uh, the only way it's going to get into your body is if you move it there. Think and that's because the skin has dead cells. And so it can't, it can't like penetrate the layer of dead cells to get to living tissue? Correct, correct. So we, we have keratinized dead cells and these cannot be penetrated by the virus. Even if they were to get into one of these cells, they're not gonna re respawn because that, those dead cells are not gonna make more copies. It has to be a currently surviving, living, dividing, healthy cell. And so the only way to get that is either your eye, your nose, a mouth or some other orifice. The way to think of this, somebody described it as, you know, when you get um, what's a glitter, glitter sticks to everything. And yes. you, days you, you'll have glitter on you. That's what the virus is like. Interesting. OK, so that's a little scary. Is it as immobile as a piece of glitter, meaning it will only move if I move it? Correct. But, but that doesn't mean if it lands on the back of your throat, it's going to stay there. Right. Over a period of a few days, it's going to get washed down. Um, slowly and spread down, if you're unlucky, into your lungs. Um, but it's not going to walk there. It's going to be carried by the the fluid in your throat. That's interesting. So I always assumed that what was happening was it was actually getting into my bloodstream. Is it not doing that? It gets into a what I'll call a topical cell. You probably have a much better name for it, but something right on the surface. It's getting into that cell. It's dividing. And then does is the virus somehow still also in a position where it can be brushed down lower? Yeah, right. So these are epithelial cells in our lungs. Um, and we also have endothelial cells, which are in our blood vessels. And all of these types of these, both these types of cells have a lot of the, uh, the lock that the spike protein key inserts into. So they're the most susceptible, but can it get into the blood? Absolutely can get into the blood, but it's easier to just wash down into your lungs than to go via your bloodstream. But once it's in your bloodstream, um, and that seems to happen to a, a majority of patients, you'll actually find that it can inflame your gut and your heart particularly. Um, and that's, that's pretty scary because if it gets to your heart, 
um, especially if you're elderly, that's when it can cause, uh, well, potentially lethal problems. What are your thoughts on the coronavirus? And did this come from another, like, uh, another planet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had enough viruses on our own damn planet. Yes, you know, start yes. blaming other planets. Uh, uh, just a reminder that life evolves opportunistically. That's what natural selection is all about. And what makes the coronavirus virus particularly diabolical, it appears, is not how deadly it is, but how simple Symptomless, it can be before you even notice you have it to then take precautions. Mm. That is ideal if you're the virus uh -huh. because now you can spread. Let's look at a, an extreme other case. Let's look at cholera, uh -huh. okay? They get this a lot in the Ganges in India, okay? Particularly virulent cholera will kill you in a day or two. And you say, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a deadly, well, you know what's more deadly than a really deadly cholera virus? Is a less deadly cholera virus. Uh -huh. Why? Because, no, it doesn't kill you in two days. It kills you in seven days. By then, you've spread it mm -hmm. to many more people than if you drop dead after two days. Mm -hmm. So it is possible for an especially deadly um, virus to not be as totally deadly in its full effect on the world. Okay. So so the coronavirus, it's because you might be able to carry it for two weeks and spread it, then you have symptoms, and then then you're gonna say, let me wash my hands? You've done spread it to your whole family and your school and <laughs> by that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why special attention is needed for, and special precautions are needed. So I don't think the precautions being taken are out of line with the risk okay. that you have. But I, I'm So a, it's not an over-exaggerated. I, I, no. I'd say though that a, a life lived in fear is a life half lived if you think okay. about it so what you want to do is just take precautions you know what this is it's an it's an experiment in whether people will listen to scientists wo zhuyi dao zai mei guo ye hui you xie wang you shen zhi gong ji nin shuo bing du shi cong nin yi miao de zhe ge yan zhi guo cheng zhong chu lai de nin zai yong shen miang de xin tai mian dui zhe zhong sheng yi I'd say it's an ironic if you take somebody who's doing their best to get the world ready and you know, putting in my case uh, billions of dollars into these tools for infectious diseases and really trying to solve broadly infectious diseases, including those that uh, can cause pandemics. But that, you know, we're in a crazy situation, so there's going to be crazy rumors. I hope, whether it's individuals or countries, that in some ways this shows us how interdependent we are, that to stop a a global pandemic, we need to find whoever's the best, whatever the best vaccine construct are, the best drugs, and we need to make it without just focusing on one country. We need to make it for the entire world, including for countries that don't have the resources to pay for vaccine research or vaccine factories. You know, they're actually, uh, in many ways, should be the priority for what we do. What we did in this study was we looked to try to figure out based on the genetics of the virus and what we knew about coronaviruses before this, where the virus might have come from. So one thing I can tell you is, is that this is not a bioweapon. Nobody made this virus in the laboratory. This is a product of nature. What we believe is, is that the virus, probably a long time ago, uh, originated from a, a bat species because there are coronaviruses of bats that are very similar to this new coronavirus, the SARS coronavirus 2. But there are other parts of the virus that look more like other animal coronaviruses. So what we believe is, is that this is a recombinant. So the virus combined from two different species to create a virus that is now infecting humans. Now, we don't know how long the virus was in humans. Uh, it could be just a few months, could be years, could be decades. Uh, but what we do know is, is that there are a few small changes that were made in the virus that allowed it to spread more rapidly. We know that the origin of this virus is different than the original SARS um, virus. Uh, that virus was actually a, a zoonosis. It's a disease that spreads from animals directly to humans. Uh, this virus definitely originated in animals, uh, probably bats and some other animals too. You probably heard on the news uh, talk about this uh, spiny anteater uh, that has uh, some viruses that are similar. So what we think is, is that this virus is a recombinant. 
it probably came from a bat virus, uh, plus perhaps one of these viruses from the pangolin. It recombined. The genetic material came together. And then it probably spread in humans for a while. We don't know how long. It could have been months, could have been decades of this virus spreading and evolving uh, in some other animal or humans. And then finally, just that one little mutation that occurred that allowed it to spread more rapidly. There is a statement now I've heard on this that this was all a conspiracy to defeat the president. Regardless of that's just nonsense. Do you think mm -hmm. that the Italians created this, what's happening in Italy? You think it's mm -hmm. all made up? That's ridiculous. So the Chinese made up 80,000 of their people dying and uh, uh, collapsed the economy in order to affect our presidential. That's no not way. what's happening. Mm -hmm. So people, these conspiracy theories on the left and the right are not helpful. Well, you can't tell people to stop doing it. They'll do it anyway, but I'm just telling you it's not helpful and it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. This is a real problem. It's a crisis. It is not the apocalypse. Right. So we have to be, we can't create public panic on the other one. We need to take the steps necessary to get this under control. And some of the stuff is just kind of trying to convince people of, of false cures. Um, you know, some is really ridiculous. I mean, the, the most ridiculous example I think that I've seen is one saying uh, that if you think you have coronavirus, you can drink bleach and that will cure you, which obviously it will not. And um, and not only will it not, but that's that's obviously extremely dangerous and something that, that no one should be doing. So we want to make sure that we take that kind of in misinformation down, um, anything that's going to put people in imminent risk of harm. And we work with the WHO. It's a trusted organization uh, that basically can give us a list of these debunked claims so we, we can operationalize that and go out and find them um, and try to take that down. If you want more advice, wisdom, guidance from other successful entrepreneurs on how you can navigate the coronavirus situation, check out the video right there next to me. I hope you find it valuable. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Did you see how the, the statistics on how many times we checked our face in a day?